Hey guys, today we're gonna talk all about media management in Final Cut Pro. I wanted to make this video because last week I posted a video where I talked about very common mistakes that new users make. And one of the things I said was about storage locations and how I recommend that you import your media into your library when you're creating a new library instead of leaving files in place. And <laughs> I was not ready for some of the comments under that video. People felt very strongly about leaving your files in place. They said that other YouTubers recommend that you leave your files in place. So what I thought we would do today is go through what all of your options are so you could decide what's best for you. And I think you'll understand why I still recommend copying your files to your library. We're also gonna talk about relinking media because a lot of people wanted to know about that. And then I'm gonna give you kind of a peek behind the curtain about my company's media media management system. Maybe it'll give you some ideas about how you can set up your own system as well. The thing to know about this is that as long as your system works for you, then go with it. If you like to leave your files in place, go right ahead. If you want to copy your media to your library, go right ahead. The only thing you need to do is calm down. But did you die? But before we get into all of this media management, I did want to ask you, will I see you at the Final Cut Creative Summit in November in Cupertino? We are going to be convening for three days of Final Cut Pro. The first day is actually spent on the Apple campus. I've never been. I'm super excited about that. And the next two days will be spent nearby. You're going to get tons of education in Final Cut Pro. There's going to be great networking. You're going to be able to meet the people behind the Mac Pro Pro apps and talk to them and a bunch of your favorite YouTubers are going to be there and I'm so excited about it. If you don't know anything about it, I'll link to it down below. I hope you come. All right, let's get into the media management. I'm first going to start with this hard drive and I'm going to show you what happens if you copy the files to the library or if you leave them in place. Okay, here is an external hard drive, and in this folder are a bunch of B-roll clips. Now, I'm going to right-click and show you how big these files are collectively. And you can see they're about 102 gigabytes. So that's what we're working with. Now, there's three different importing methods for working with these files, and I'm going to show you all three. Now in Final Cut here, let's create a new library. And I'm going to name it Copy Files to Library to show you what happens when you copy your media into your library. And then let's open the import window and I've navigated to that particular folder. And here are all of my clips. Under Files, it's going to give me the option to copy to library or leave files in place. If you want to import your media into your library, but you don't have the copy to library option here, let me show you what you need to do next. Close the import window and select your library in the sidebar. Now head on over to the inspector window and here where it says storage locations, select modify settings. And perhaps this is what you see instead. You actually see the name of one of your hard drives here for your media option. Just drop down and change to in library and hit OK. And now when you open that import window again, it should say copy to library. So I'm going to select import all. And now Final Cut is actually pulling all of this media into this library. And this does take some time. All right, you can see from my background tasks window that all of my media is finally done importing. Let's take a look at that library size now. Now, if you remember, the original media was about, I think, 102 gigs. If I right click and figure out how big my library is, there it is, 102 gigs. So copying your media to your library does not make your files bigger. That's the first thing that you should know. The challenge that you have at this point is that now you still have all of your original files here. So the thing is, is you have taken up a lot more space on this drive because I have duplicates of my media. But guess what? You should have duplicates of your media. That's your backup. The key is, is that you don't want to keep both of these files on this same drive. So what your options are is that from the beginning, you could have two drives plugged in and create your library on one drive and keep that backup media on another drive. Or you could at this point have a second drive plugged in and move this media to that second drive. Now, you wanna make sure that you're not just copying the media, you're actually physically moving it. So instead of just dragging and dropping it, you see how you get this green plus sign? What you wanna do is hold down the command key as you drag and drop 
And now you'll see in your pop-up, you're actually moving the items to the backup drive. You're not just copying them. So you don't have to go back to your original drive and delete that media, it's already gone. Now your other option is to actually copy this entire library to that backup drive. So I'm not holding down the command key, I'm just dragging and dropping. And then you could opt to delete this original folder. Another option that you have here is instead of copying the media to a drive, you could upload it to a cloud solution. But for me, I know myself, and if I'm in a situation where I need the backup files, it's urgent and I don't have time to mess around with the cloud. So when I first start a project and when I'm actively working on it, I like to have my backup on an actual physical drive that I can hold in my hand. All right, let's go back to Final Cut Pro. Let's start a new library. And I'm gonna call this library, leave files in place. Now, when I import the media, I'm going to select leave files in place. Let me open up my background tasks and you can see that the only work Final Cut is doing is creating these thumbnails and waveforms. So this is going to be a much faster process, which is definitely an advantage. All right, let's open up that finder and take a closer look at this new library, leave files in place. I'm going to right click and you can see it's only 29.2 megabytes. It keeps the size of your Final Cut library very small. However, you still need to back up this original folder somewhere. So you're not really saving space because you're still gonna have two copies of all of these video clips, whether they're in an external folder or if they're inside your library. Here's another reason I really like to store my media in my library. What if I created a new folder and I drag this B-roll folder into this new folder on the same drive, mind you. Now, when I go back to my Final Cut library, all of my media is missing, even though it's on the same drive and you still have to go back and relink all your files. I'm gonna undo that. And you can see that my media comes right back. But watch this, what if I renamed this folder? I didn't move the folder, all I did was rename it. And again, my media is missing. This is not a problem you will ever have if you copy your media to the library. Now, what happens if you're grabbing media right from a memory card? It's a little bit of a different workflow, let me show you. So I'm gonna create another new library here in Final Cut, and I'm gonna call this one Import from Card. Let's hit the Import button. And you can see that leaving files in place is grayed out. It's not an option when you're reading directly from a memory card, but you do have options. I'm gonna close this window. Make sure that you're selected on the right library in the sidebar. Again, we're gonna go to storage locations. And instead of importing from the library, I can choose a particular hard drive. Let's go back and import the media. And now you can see that it says copy to T7 here. I'm gonna select import all. And now that that has imported, let's take a look at our hard drive. We have a new folder here called Final Cut Original Media. And my clips have been sorted into multiple folders, which I cannot rename without confusing Final Cut. I hate when I see this Final Cut Original Media folder on one of my drives. If I didn't realize that my storage location was set incorrectly, this folder gives me ice in my heart. I hate it. And I immediately will do the thing where I select the library in my sidebar, head on up to file and consolidate the media. Make sure that my media destination is now in the library and now you can see in my background tasks, it's actually importing the media into my library, which is where I like it to live, okay? What it will not do is delete the media from this Final Cut original media folder. This will stay there and you will end up with duplicates. So as long as you've backed up your media somewhere else, once you've consolidated your media, it is safe to delete this folder. Now let's talk about what happens when you need to relink your files and your media is missing. I don't know about you, but when I see that red screen, oh my God, it just makes my stomach drop a little bit because when I was a new Final Cut user and I really didn't understand the media management in here and I did not have a good system, I one time lost a bunch of B-roll shots from a paying client. And to this day, 
I still remember the client and I still remember the shots I lost and they were unrecoverable. That is why I keep stressing to you that you need to have a good system in place. Now, because I have a good system, when I see that red screen, I'm not quite in the same panic, but I still have that like little tinge. So I know that a lot of you guys are stressed out when you see your media missing. You don't really know how to recover it. Let me show you. I'm going to, in my hard drive, take this folder once again and drop it into my moved items. So my leave in place library is back to being missing media. So how would we want to go about relinking these files? If you just have one missing file, you can select just one clip, head on up to file and select relink files. I'm going to select original media because this is the original media and you just need to hit locate all. And you can see right away here, it has located that missing media super fast. And all I have to do is hit the choose button. And this window can be a little confusing because the data disappears. Don't worry. Just hit relink files and there is my missing media. I could also select all of the clips in my browser at once and relink them that way. It tells me right here, 41 of 41 files matched. I can twirl down and see more detailed information and I just need to relink the files and they're back crisis averted. If this isn't working for you, there is a chance that you just don't have the right hard drive plugged into your Mac when you're going through this relinking process. That's why it's so important to keep track of where all of your media is living. Um, and there's also a chance that maybe that media somehow got deleted and it's gone forever. I hope that never happens to you, but if it has, you know the pain, it's the worst. Which leads me to my own company's media management system. I just wanna kind of give you a peek at how we organize things. To give you some context, um, my company is made up of a small team of people. We have four people who edit and it's not uncommon for us to hop on to different projects. Maybe someone will start like rough cutting a project and then someone more experienced will come in and polish it up. So we actually share physical drives. We're all located in one physical office so we can just pass each other drives, no problem. So that's kind of the basis of our media management system. So what we do is we import directly from our media cards. And of course, as you know, we copy our files into our library. Once we've imported our media into a library, we will drag and drop that Final Cut library to a separate backup drive for safekeeping. And then we each kind of have our own drives that we work on and we'll continue to work on that particular drive as we update the project. As you know, Final Cut Pro auto saves your libraries as you work. It doesn't save all the media in these backups, but it saves like the structure of your projects and libraries as a whole. So if there was a situation where let's say a Final Cut library we were actively working on got corrupted, we would go back and reach for the latest backup from our auto saves and then reconnect the media from that original backup of the library we put on the backup drive. Once we're done with a project for a client, our system is to upload our media to Dropbox. Right now, that is our current cloud solution because for us, it's been the most economical, although we are looking at more like designated media management cloud solutions like Altion is a good one, where you are working with a cloud storage solution that's really designed for media files. For now, Dropbox has been working for us. Now, this is what they look like in our Dropbox. They look like folders, but they do indicate that they are Final Cut bundles. And what I like about this system is I can actually open up the Final Cut bundle and I can navigate to my original media and my clips are all still here. So if I needed to revisit this library, I could pull the whole library down from Dropbox, or if I just needed a specific shot, I can navigate into the file structure of that bundle and from Dropbox download individual clips. Now, obviously uploading these huge media files to the cloud is a slow and tedious process, which is why we don't upload to the cloud until the project is completed and the client has signed off on it. The safest space for your media, I think really is the cloud, but it's definitely not the most convenient, which is why we keep our 
backups for active projects in-house physically on hard drives here. And we put in our contracts that we're going to retain the media for our clients for a year. But the truth is, is that we save them in perpetuity because we have long-term relationships with a lot of our clients. But we put that year timeline in there to protect ourselves in case something catastrophic happens and we lose media from something from like, I don't know, three years ago. If you want more tips of that nature, handling clients and contracts and stuff like that, you should check out my course, Agency Kickstart at jenjager.com. It's chock full of that kind of information. Now, the last thing I want to show you about our media management system is how we keep track of the locations of all of these projects. It's really low tech, do not judge me, but what we do is use Google Drive. It's just like a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel that we can all access and we basically just you know, enter the name of the client, what drive it's on, the date it was modified, stuff like that. You'll notice that some of these things are on active drives and some of them have already been archived to Dropbox. This is a living document and it's not that fancy, but it works for us. So I know I threw a lot of information at you in this video. I'm interested to hear, have I convinced you to copy your files into the library or are you always going to be team leave them in place? Let me know in the comments. Like I said, the most important thing is that you have a system that works for you today and in the future. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you at the Final Cut Creative Summit in November. Here's some other videos for you. Until then, have a good one.